Our speaker is uh, Ramazan uh, Kosmats from uh, uh, Hamburg uh, area. Uh, Hamburg, uh, uh, from what I can see, it is uh, 1,800,000 people, and the, it is a, nearly 800,000 square kilometers, the surface. So it's the largest of all the areas that we are considering. So the, the uh, stage is yours. Thank you. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, queridos colegas, benvolguts colleagues, senoras y senores. My name is Ramazan Korkmaz. I work in the Energy de Department in the Ministry of Environment and Energy in Hamburg. Thank you for inviting me to today's event. I'm delighted to take this opportunity to present to you the cornerstones of Hamburg's regional participatory governance approach concerning the local energy transition. Now the following sentences will be a little bit difficult for me. Moltes gracias, muchas gracias por su invitación. Estoy encantado de tener esta oportunidad de presentar las piedras angulares de la dirección participativa de la región de Hamburgo respecto a la transición ener energética local. Was it fine? <laughs> I'm particularly grateful to the organizers of this international conference and to our wonderful host, Spain, the province of Barcelona in Catalonia, and the beautiful city of Barcelona. I hope I shall have time to see more of your beautiful city. The, the economist Mansur Olson once said, the rise or decline of a nation depends on the extent to which its society is capable of institutional change. A significant condition of this capability for change is political participation by citizens as a foundation of democracy. But there is a disagreement about the forms, methods, and scope of participation. By public participation, we mean the participation of public in political decision-making and shaping the political context. We do not see the term as being clearly defined. But it, is usually, but it usually denotes participation that goes beyond electing political representatives to parliament. The term is applied to decisions in local politics and planning. So. so for purpose of saving time, we will skip this and other slides. <clears throat> Before I go into public participation in Hamburg in more detail, detail, though, I would like to tell you a little bit about our city. Hamburg is a city-state and is one of the 16 federal states that go to make up the Federal Republic of Germany. As a port city, Hamburg has traditionally seen itself as the gateway to the world. The port of Hamburg is Germany's biggest seaport and is one of the 20 largest container ports in the world. Since 1996, Hamburg has been home to the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, ITLOS. With its airport and its role as a transport hub, Hamburg as a, as a whole is one of the most important logistic centers in Europe. Practically all European states are accessible from Hamburg in logistical terms. The free and Hanseatic city of Hamburg is the center of the Hamburg metropolitan region, the sixth largest of Germany's 11 metropolitan regions. Our region is the economic center of northern Germany. The metropolitan region of Hamburg is home to 5 million people, of whom 1.8 million live in the city. Over 300,000 people commute daily into the city for work. Our metropolitan region is one of the most competitive regions in Germany and Europe. Hamburg is a highly industrialized economic hub with over 500 industrial enterprises and home to Europe's second largest port with corresponding hinterland transport. Hamburg is a creative media center, growing immigration hub, and a green waterside metropolis with a high standard of living. Hamburg is a remarkably green and blue city. Wherever you go, you will find water, parks, and green open spaces. The citizens in Hamburg say about Hamburg, in German, Hamburg meine Perle. Translated into English, it means Hamburg my pearl. You are invited to visit Hamburg and to check if this is right or wrong. Hamburg. 
Hamburg citizens and private sector have a high energy demand that needs to be satisfied in an affordable and ideally climate-friendly manner. An annual power consumption of uh, approximately 12,000 gigawatt hours, annual natural gas consumption of uh, 20,000 gigawatt hours, and 5,000 gigawatt hours of long distance district heating per year. At the same time, Hamburg has an excellent energy network infrastructure that has to cope with transporting power to this energy hungry city. Cities are responsible for most of the emissions we cause and are large consumers of energy. But technological developments that could limit climate change are also devised and used in cities. So in the words of Mr. Petruzzi, cities are both the problem and the solution. How did the German energy transition, what we call the Energiewende, actually begin? What are its origins? The German Energiewende is rooted in the anti-nuclear movement of the 1970s and brings together both conservatives and conservationists from environmentalists to the church. The shock of the oil crisis and the meltdown in Chernobyl led to the search for alternatives and the invention of feed-in tariffs. The term Energiewende didn't just come about in the past few years. In fact, it was coined in a 1980 study by Germany's Institute for Applied Ecology. The oil crisis led to the first energy efficiency policies. In 1986, the reactor in Chernobyl exploded and radioactive rain fell on Germany. The Germans lost their faith in the safety and nuclear power, but didn't know yet how to replace it. Chernobyl not only shocked people worldwide, but also led to a stronger movement against nuclear power and towards renewable energy. A German national coalition of the Social Democratic and Green Parties, in power until 2005, initiated the Renewable Energy Act in 1998 and the first wave of nuclear power phase out in 2000. The Renewable Energy Act foresees a steady and cost-effective increase in the share of electricity, generated from renewable sources to a minimum of 80% as a proportion of gross electricity used by the year 2050. This share is intended to reach 40 to 45% by 2025 and 55 to 60% by 2035. After a rollback in 2010, the nuclear accident at Fukushima in 2011 stimulated an even broader consensus in Germany for phasing out nuclear power and, and intensifying the energy transition. Today, ecology and responding to climate change are inextricably linked with energy and economic policy issues. Of course, the environmental policy goals of energy transition also have positive impacts on human health, atmospheric pollution, radiation, long-term climate change. It is a question of safeguarding our living environment. Permit me a brief detour on the subject of our living environment and human health, in this case, the danger to life and limp. On this slide, I have depicted the effects on Hamburg of a reactor catastrophe. In the event of a nuclear catastrophe, Hamburg, fall, Hamburg would fall within the evacuation zone for a number of atomic power plants. In the worst case, up to five million people in the Hamburg metropolitan region would be affected. In Germany as a whole, 51% of the population lives within potential evacuation zones. The onset of climate change, but above, above all the reactor disaster in Fukushima, has radically changed energy policy in Germany. Nuclear power, the supposed bridging technology, has turned out to be a dead end. There is now a consensus in German society that we need the energy transition, which is at least a political, economical, and a technological process. 
but what actually is the energy transition? The energy transition is a project that, broadly speaking, aims to realize a sustainable energy supply system. The cornerstones of the sustainable uh, transformation of energy supply are as follows. Abandonment of fossil energies and, in particular, in particular of nuclear power in favor of renewable energies, energy efficiency, and climate protection. These key cornerstones now enjoy political consensus in Germany and are reflected in the German federal government's energy concept and in action taken by the federal states and local authorities. I would like to point out, depending on the political viewpoint, there are some more demands on the energy transition, especially decentralizing energy supply in technical aspects, for example, like in Utrecht, and democratization of the energy supply. Democratization in this case means to break up the political and economical power of the biggest five German uh, energy comp companies. Maybe you've heard from them, um, RWE, E.ON, Vattenfall, ENBV, EVE. And democratization also means citizen involvement and more public participation. And, but how is the energy transition getting on in Hamburg, you may ask. Strate strategically, the energy transition made in Hamburg rests on three pillars. First of all, greater energy efficiency. The best energy is energy that is not consumed because it doesn't have to be produced in the first place. A city like Hamburg requires a great deal of energy. A lot of, a lot of it can be saved without encroaching upon quality of life and economic strength more economic heating technology, better building insulation, modern power plants, and the optimization of operational processes offer a vast array of uh, uh, opportunities for the most efficient use of electricity and heat. Regarding energy prices, this is also worthwhile from a financial perspective. The second main pillar of the energy transition made in Hamburg comprises smart, in the sense of uh, sustainable smart grids. The electricity and natural gas grids must be extended and converted. Heat supply and energy storage require further de development in order to bring the fluctuating generation of energy from renewable sources in line with demand situations that vary depending on the time of the day. A trivial example, when the wind is not blowing, no wind power is generated. And when the sun is not shining, no power can be generated from photovoltaic power plants. The third pillar is the expansion of renewable energy. To achieve this, production capacities need to be expanded. Let us turn now to how public participation can sensibly be organized and in which areas. It is up to the administration to flesh out the principles set by politics. What political tools do we actually have and which ones are also suited to meaningful public participation? On this slide, we show a selection of what we in Hamburg believe are the most important universal policy instrument concerning energy policy, which are at the same time largely congruent with the instruments available to industrial and uh, economic policy. The instruments shown are not structured, defined, and rated scientifically, but from a strategic policy perspective. The perspective of the administration charged with putting flesh on the policies. Now, what regulators and what levers can political decision makers use when it comes to making energy or industrial and economic policy? In our view, they are state owned enterprises, public procurement and fiscal policy, public subsidies, cluster policy, dialogue structures cooperation agreements and joint ventures, legislation and tax laws.
each of these instruments has an effect, but also a political cost. This cost can be a financial one, or it can be at the expense of other individual stakeholders. Evaluating the effects and the costs of these instruments is the responsibility of policymakers. In other words, it comes down to a political cost-benefit analysis. To give you just one example, in countries where large state-owned corporations have a major, major influence, political decision makers will assess public companies' costs and benefits differently from those in countries where the principle of economic policy is to keep state influence on the economy to a minimum. Let us now take a brief look at the history of energy policy in Hamburg. In the 1990s and the first years of the new millennium, the Hamburgische Elektrizitätswerke, uh, we use the abbreviation HEW, were sold stage by stage to the Vattenfall Group to balance Hamburg's budget. The IAV then comprised electricity and district heating operations as well as gas supply through its subsidiary Hein Gas. The sale process took place before the unbundling, reorganization, and regulation of the German electricity market. The gas operation was later sold on by Vattenfall to the E.ON Group. The sale was and still is controversial politically and socially, particularly regarding its impact on municipal services. Vattenfall's poor image and the construction of the coal-fired power station in Hamburg's Moorburg district acted as drivers for the return of energy supply in Hamburg to local control. In politics and society, it was quickly realized that the, that the privatization was a mistake as far as energy and climate policy were concerned and that the city had lost a great deal of influence. In view of these disappointed expectations, the former mayor of Hamburg, Ole von Beust, who was a significant supporter of the last privatization rounds, commented that a public sector monopoly has been replaced by a quasi-monopoly in the private sector. As a consequence, the municipal company Hamburg Energie was set up in 2009. It provides Hamburg's households with green power and is active in the renewable energy sector. In 2011, as a reaction to the political debate about a complete return of the energy networks to public control, the city of Hamburg negotiated with the electricity, district heating, and gas grid companies to take over a 25.1% share. This was followed on 22nd September 2013 by a successful referendum on the energy networks that was initiated by stakeholders in society. The referendum called for a complete public buyback of the electricity, district heating, and gas grid with a binding goal of a socially just, climate-compatible com renewable energy supply under democratic control. The Hamburg Senate began implementing the referendum decision by drawing up contractual agreements with Vattenfall and E.ON. This was, this was followed in January 2014 by the remunicipalization of the electricity grid. For tax reasons and on the basis of a careful company evaluation, purchase options were agreed for the district heating and gas grid operations that can be taken up in the 2019 financial year. The takeover will be in the form of a shared deal and of course includes taking over the workforce. Energy transition in Hamburg is an ongoing process. At some point, we will have achieved it. On the way, we will be confronted in Hamburg with numerous political, economic, and technological issues. Currently on the agenda in Hamburg are the development of a heating concept and a solution for replacing the old, obsolete, coal-fired power station in Wedel on Hamburg's western boundary. 
The buyback of the energy grids and the exploitation of synergies will lead in the medium term to the setting up of public utilities that will group together energy infrastructure and other municipal services such as water supply and sewage disposal. The Hamburg public have participated here at various levels and continue to do so. Let me briefly outline the most important participatory projects. During its process through the Hamburg Parliament, the referendum was supported by respondents from the Citizens' Initiative. These included nature conservation groups, employee representatives, and other non-profit organizations. Last year, when a heating concept was being developed, there was a participatory process on the future of Hamburg's heat supply. Those involved included representatives of the Hamburg Parliament, the local energy suppliers, non-profit organizations such as nature conservation groups, business representatives, and consumer organizations. Workshops were run on heat supply in Hamburg. More or less the same participants, with the addition of experts, took part in a participatory process to develop an alternative to the obsolete coal-fired power station in Wedel. Together, these developments lead to a desire by the Hamburg Parliament to, such, so to set up a non-parliamentary advisory board for grids. Society's main stakeholders are represented on it. I will tell you more later. How do these components of participation correlate with the policy instruments? The components are arranged in our toolbox as follows. Customer advisory councils in the state-owned enterprises, for example, Hamburg Energie, advisory board for grids in all instruments, participatory projects in the dialogue structures, referendum in the legislative instrument, and public information events in all instruments. In addition, Hamburg has a transparency law governing the publication of certain information about administrative procedures, especially procedures, contracts, and expert opinions concerning public services. This information is posted by the ministries on a transparency website. It is an important basis of public transparency and is an important indirect aid to enabling and supporting public participation. Without information, you can't do anything. How highly do our components of participation rate in terms of public impact? If we subject the components of participation developed and or applied in Hamburg to an ex post analysis of public impact, we find that the following picture emerges. If the scale of intensity in the scheme is applied to Hamburg's components of participation, we see the public impact rising as we inform, we consult, we involve, we collab collaborate, and finally we empower. From an administrative perspective, it is inter interesting that these participatory measures are the result of the political and social debates about the future of energy transition in Hamburg, especially the remunicipalization of energy supply. The components of participation were not planned centrally and in a structured way by our political leaders or the administration. Instead, they have emerged from an ongoing political process and from spontaneously defined demands by society and our municipal stakeholders. Let me now tell you a little bit about the referendum. The referendum was instigated by the initiative Unser Hamburg, Unser Netz, our Hamburg, our grid, and was set up in 2010 by six organizations. It is interesting to note that the founders included the Hamburg Consumer Association and an important church district in the city. Following the success of the referendum, the focus of the initiative shifted to critical and constructive support for the implementation of the referendum's demands. 
ahead of the referendum and following it, the Hamburg Parliament asked the initiative to nominate delegates to attend and be questioned at hearings of the Environment Committee. Here, the citizens' initiative expressed their desire to support the further implementation of the referendum. Shortly afterwards, the Ministry of the Environment and Energy ran participatory, participatory processes to generate initial ideas for developing a heating concept for Hamburg and replacing the outdated and uh, obsolete coal-fired power station in Wedel. This uh, participatory process led to the des desire in the political sphere for a non-parliamentary body to be set up with representatives of all significant stakeholders. Its task was to support ongoing remunicipalization re and the implementation of the energy transition in Hamburg. I would like to, I would like briefly to describe the advisory board for grids. The advisory board for grids um, advises the energy grid companies and the responsible ministry, the Ministry of Environment and Energy. The grid companies are represented on the board by their managers. It makes suggestions to the grid companies and the ministry as it sees fit. The board sees its role as a mediator in the dialogue between the grid companies, politics, groups and society and the public. Its goal is the continuing development of Hamburg's energy grids and energy transition in the interests of a socially just, climate compatible and democratically governed uh, energy supply from renewable energy sources. It comprises representatives of groups in society, primarily from the environmental sector, business, including renewables, politics, and Hamburg's higher education institutes. The advisory board for grids has a, has a charter, meets in public, and begins each of its sessions with a public question time, during which any member of the public can uh, ask questions on energy topics, which are then answered by the board or the grid companies. Additionally, the board has a supporting office and a small budget for commissioning expert opinions to ensure full transparency, meeting papers, minutes, and deliverables are published on the board's own website. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to change the slide. <laughs> Last slide. Participatory models also breach the principle of separation of powers, particularly uh, with regard to the executive and the legislature. One could argue that in a democracy, policy forming is a constitutional function of the organs of state and that public participation should thus be limited to legally prescribed class actions in administrative laws, such as in urban land use planning. The changes in energy infrastructure and the associated far-reaching impact on nature and the human living environment demand a high degree of understanding and acceptance on the part of society. For that reason, we need to involve the public in dialogue on these processes. Today's, today, some people in Germany are describing public participation at local authority level as the new separation of powers in local politics. It is against this backdrop that initial research projects are taken up the topic, part funded by the federal government. For example, two institutes in Germany have begun a joint research project called Demo Energy into the transformation of the energy system as a driver of democratic innovation. They are investigating how acceptance of the energy transition can be increased and how the public can be involved more in the process. The questions posed there are also pertinent to Hamburg, of course. What can and must we learn about the conflicts that arise during the energy transition? What consequences, what consequences do their characteristics have for the role and organization of public participation related to energy transition? What communication and participation practices are currently becoming established in the energy transition sector? What do these processes have to teach us about planning, implementing public participation on infrastructure projects related to energy transition? 
in Hamburg, we believe that we have already learned quite a bit. Further developments in our city and in the rest of Germany will continue to be exciting. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention.